I don't know how it goes on or why it goes on, you know, but it goes on. Fish substitution is a problem. It's, yeah, it's hard to stay in business under these circumstances. You believe you're buying a premium product and you're getting a lesser product. Seafood mislabeling is an enormous problem in Massachusetts. Consumers are routinely and unwittingly buying undesirable or overfished seafood. It happens for a range of reasons, from outright fraud to a chef's ignorance. But industry specialists say money is commonly the motivator. If you take a Vietnamese river fish and substitute it for Atlantic cod and you can sell it for $12 a pound when you bought it for $1.50, there's straight up profit right there. The mislabeling indicates a dramatic lack of regulation in the seafood business. From the ocean to your plate, the supply chain of fish is really long. And there are lots of opportunities for mislabeling to take place. Processed fish fillets of similar species are difficult to tell apart by sight or taste. This is the perch, and this is the red snapper. This is which? Which is which? You yeah. tell me. I don't know. No, okay. This is the red snapper, scarlet snapper, red snapper, and this is the ocean perch. And they're both the same. They both cook alike, they taste alike, and everything else. Uh, Substitution is very easy to do. We have to go to DNA. Um, do you have any soul? Boston Globe reporters Jen Abelson and Beth Daly undertook a five-month investigation of the seafood industry in Massachusetts. They collected fish from 134 restaurants, grocery stores, and seafood markets from Lemonster to Provincetown. Today I'm on Cape Cod going to about nine restaurants, ordering mostly cod to see what people are serving, because um, we suspect not everyone is serving cod. We're wondering if there's other species they're substituting. You don't have any, like, broiled fish, do you? So I'll take a cod sandwich. Uh, how about like boiled cod? Yeah, I guess I'll get a fish witch sandwich. Daly and Abelson carefully prepared their samples for shipment to a lab in Canada where the fish's DNA would be tested. It's very much right out of, of CSI. Is take a sample and the labs can tell us what's been substituted. The lab determined that 48% were mislabeled. Among the scores of restaurants and fish sellers that had mislabeled fish, Scargo Cafe in Dennis thought it was selling sole, but the fish was actually Alaskan Place, a flatfish from the Pacific. Instead of using cod in their sandwich as advertised on the menu, PJ's family restaurant in Wellfleet used haddock, which is perfectly palatable but often cheaper than cod. McCormick and Schmicks in Boston also served haddock instead of cod. An East Bay Grill in Plymouth substituted Pacific cod for the locally caught haddock that it advertised. When contacted by the Globe, management at East Bay Grill claimed it knew of the substitution, but that their menu had not been updated. The white tuna at both Manado Sushi Buffet in Natick and Kowloon in Saugus was actually escalar, an oily, cheaper species. When contacted, Managers at Kowloon said they were unaware and were investigating, while those at Monado believed white tuna was an American name for Escalar. Nobel Garcia, owner of El Oriental de Cuba in Jamaica Plain, admitted to serving ocean perch instead of the red snapper advertised on his menu. Garcia says that he substituted the perch because red snapper was so hard to find. The expensive in, uh, inability to find uh, red snapper it was lost from the market for a while. We couldn't even get the whole snappers. And that's a fish that is very similar in taste. And uh, the price is the only thing that's different. Uh, it's $385, $390 a pound. It goes up to $425 a pound. And red snapper will go up to $8, $895. But I don't think I ever thought of it as a price saver and things like that. I just wanted to have availability of a product that I could give my customers. Garcia says that his menus are now being updated to show the ocean perch. Beyond the economic toll on consumers, fish mislabeling hurts the local fishermen who do play by the rules. Seafood mislabeling and fraud hurts commercial fishermen by taking away our ability to distribute what we catch locally. Unfortunately, it has meant a lot of us have gone out of business because you know, we, can't, we can't stand up to those costs anymore. The Food and Drug Administration, which oversees the labeling of fish, says it is trying to develop a better program to identify fish using the same DNA methods employed by the globe. It has already begun testing on a limited basis and hopes to expand that next year.
but until there is a more formal review process for all fish labeling, there's no clear way that consumers can be sure that the fish they bought is the fish they are getting.